morning, one and all. So, welcome back uh, to this um, guest lecture by our external examiner. So, first, I would like to thank our uh, vice chancellor for providing this opportunity of arranging a guest lecture. Uh, whenever a uh, great scientist are visiting from other institute to the department, uh, in order to utilize their expertise for the PG and PhD students. Uh, so, this guest lecture is arranged, and the entire university, university is watching this guest lecture. And I welcome uh, a Dean School of Postgraduate Studies, uh, Director uh, Natural Resource Management, uh, our external examiner uh, for this guest lecture, and our present uh, head of the department, as well as our uh, uh, eminent uh, post director of research, all the uh, uh, professors and the scholars for this guest lecture, and uh, our external examiner, Dr. Manoj Srivastava, sir. He is the principal scientist of uh, soil science uh, from uh, ICR Indian Agriculture Research Institute in New Delhi. And uh, presently, sir is uh, involved in the environmental division. And uh, he is uh, a known uh, nano scientist uh, who is working on the soil science area. And uh, now, his guest lecture is on the topic of a uh, role of uh, radio tracers in the applications of soil fertility. Uh, we welcome you, sir. And now, now let us listen to sir's. This lecture presentation. Thank you. Respected uh, head of the divisions, <coughs> Professor Subramanian, all the service scientists, and the, uh, all dignitaries who is attending from uh, online. Very good afternoon. And indeed, it is a privilege and honor to me to present my work on topic on radio, role of radio tracer. In this center of, I would say, unique center of national agricultural system. Because I don't think uh, this nano agriculture, nano technology in agriculture system or division is working in any other, other part of our system. So, thank you very much. And I would like to thank uh, Honorable Vice Chancellor, Dean BGS, head of the division, for giving me opportunity for this. So, the topic of my today's lecture is love radio tracer in soil fertility. So, there is difference between alpha, beta, gamma in terms of their charge particles and their penetration power. And uh, gamma basically they are high frequency electromagnetic radiation, whereas uh, alpha and beta they are the particles positively and negatively charged. And if we talk about radioactivity, these are this is basically spontaneous emission of radiation in terms of alpha, beta, and gamma from the nucleus of an unstable atom. And the current unit or SI unit is uh, Becquerel. The older unit or bigger unit was the Curie. And one Becquerel is one DPS, which is called the disintegration per second. And another important property apart from the energy that half-life. So half-life is uh, any radioactive material is amount of time needed to be act activity to reach one half of the original amount. And you can see that half-life varies from years to a millisecond. Means if you see the tritium example of tritium, they are having 12.33 years, T30 to 14.3 days, hydrogen 125, 60.1 hours, and polonium, polonium to 14 is 2.3 milliseconds. So you can say that radioactivity half-life or radio pressure half-life can be varied. And according to their half-life, and then energy can be utilized for various purposes. So isotope definition, everybody knows that isotopes are elements having same atomic number but different mass number. In other words, the atoms have same number of protons but different number of neutrons in the nucleus. And there are two categories. One is radioisotopes, which emits alpha, beta, gamma or radiation. And another one, the staple isotope, they naturally decay but can exist in natural material in different proportions. But, but what basically use various use of radioisotopes? There is radioisotope having various use in medical industry along with the agriculture. So medically, everybody knows that cobalt 60, cobalt 60 being used as a for the radio therapy purpose, then I have 135 for radio diagnosis. Same way, radioisotopes they are basically unstable. They occur naturally or produced by bombarding a small amount of particle elements with neutrons emitted from the nuclear wave. So these, these are basically, they are either found in the naturally 
or if you want a higher concentration, they are basically produced in the cyclotron or they are produced in the nuclear reactors. Now, come to the agriculture. Agriculture is our main state. Our more than 50 to 60 percent populations, they are engaged in the agricultural occupations. And there are some key issues related to the agriculture production system. Well, first, uh, most important one is the soil degradation and fertility, soil fertility problem. Then low yield of various major crops, low water use productivity, diversification of crops, post harvest losses. So these are the key issues and all these key issues can be addressed by, very well addressed by the nuclear technology. Here I am going to discuss only soil degradation and fertility related problem. And that if, the, uh, if you see the major strategies by which we can come to this major agricultural problem, they are in development of food crop varieties, management of water resources, improving soil fertility and productivity, integrated pest management, reduced post service losses, and apply R&D and new technology to increase crop production. And one of the important technology or R&D can be this nuclear technology. So as I told you, and various field of uh, nuclear agriculture and production, uh, uh, nuclear technology can be used in the food and agricultural system. Among that, I'm going to discuss this soil and water management and crop mutation related things, especially related to the soil fertility. So you, how this nuclear technology can be used in the agriculture? Like in medical system, they can be used either the therapeutic purpose or diagnostic purpose, same way, in the agricultural science, that it can be used as the diagnostic purpose in the form of radio tracers, or their uh, therapeutic purpose like using ionizing radiation to produce uh, for the mutation breeding purpose. So, in the form of isotopes, both stable and radioisotope can be used, especially for soil fertility. Then, how soil tracers or radio tracers can be utilized in the soil fertility, which is our topic. So, first one is that nutrient use efficiency. Like uh, in the Lata, in our presentation, she told that nutrient use efficiency, she worked on special nutrient for nitrogen. So for nitrogen use efficiency, there are various ways, conventional way, like we use control and we grow the plants in different treatments and then we calculate. In the case of uh, radio tracer, we can use a run radio tracer. Tracer means the, the, the element which can trace the path of a tracing. So tracing means like, suppose you take, take example of nitrogen. So nitrogen is tracing which, the, which path we want to trace. For, for tracing this path, we use the tracer like N15, one of the tracer for nitrogen, which although it is a stable isotope, why we are using stable isotope for nitrogen? Because they, there is no sufficient or uh, appropriate isotopes, radioisotopes. We will discuss further. Like, then fallout radionuclides, these are the fallout radionuclides are CZ-137. Like 10 beryllium 7, we'll discuss in our slide in, in next coming slides. Then to study the soil earning matter dynamics, then tracking the ionic movement of plants and soil. The basic principle in soil fertility, which is being that is known as the isotope dilution. What this isotope dilution principle says in a system, this, this basically isotope dilution principle is basically a chemical principle which we applied in the soil system. So in a system, in, in case of our soil system, system is a soil. So in a system in equilibrium, the ratio of a treasure to a carrier isotope is constant. For a given constant amount of radioactivity, the specific activity is inversely proportional to the total amount of test substance present. So if suppose X is unknown compound in the system we want to know, by isotope of the same compound, which are we are introducing into the system, so that that compound can be easily calculated by this formula, where y is that uh, y is that uh, isotope from the same compound which is, uh, with known initial activity. Suppose we are introducing any compound, having uh, suppose uh, we are introducing in soil system p32. So p32 activity will be millicurie per gram. That is called as a specific activity. So when we introduce in one system, there is in that system uh, uh, phosphorus is already present in that another form, which is a stable. Form. So that specific specific activity is reduced in that proportion. So this is this particular compound can be calculated by this uh, reduced in the specific activity of the compound which is which we are introducing into the soil system or the system in the question. 
then there is three basic principle especially in the soil science the things work on the isotope value principles these are the if you heard about in agriculture system one is a value e value and l value we'll discuss what is this three a, a value so a value is is, is is the that uh, this term is uh, introduced by the fried and dean in 1952 when two sources of nutrient are present in the soil plant would absorb from the end one of each of these product sources in the proportion of the expected quantity available so this uh, suppose p32 s35 calcium 45 zinc these are the isolated isotope isotopes and these are the calculation why we can can calculate the a value so a value I will do, I'll, in the last we'll discuss what is the difference between these three isotopic parameters and another one is e value so e value of soil is a measure of the isotopically exchange the if, if, if in case of we use phosphorus suppose if in case of we are using nitrogen so it is e value for nitrogen so same thing we can calculate so this method is a small sample of soil sample soil infiltrated with a p32 level phosphoric solution and suspension shaken for at a fixed time and we can cal cal calculate calculated the e value so e value basically represent the exchangeable amount of phosphorus or any nutrient present okay, so uh, then, then e value uh, so then l value comes into the picture this is introduced by the larson in 1952 it is a measure of isotopically exchange fraction of phosphate in the soil determine the quantity of soil phosphate in labile form differs from the a value in concept and basic experimental requirements so now these three concepts are there a e and l so in case of a value we 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 calculate the a value basically it indicate the availability of nutrient from the soil means a is indicated for available nutrient from the soil in respect to fertilizer present suppose when you applied any fertilizer into the soil so there are two sources of nutrient one suppose you are applying phosphate fertilizer so one source is phosphate fertilizer and second source is the native phosphorus is present so how you can distinguish how much plant is taken from the fertilizer and how much you are taking from the soil so in case in that case we calculate the a value in case of e value we calculated the we are not introducing any standard fertilizers here we are introducing the carrier free solution or solution with some specific activity of phosphorus solution So where it is it gives the exchangeable isotopic that that phenomena called the isotopic exchange. So this isotopic exchangeable phosphorus we calculated. That's why we call the E value. And L value we do the same thing what we are doing into the in case of E value, but here we are group plant also. So in case of that we 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 analyze the plant, the specific activity of plant also as well the specific activity of soil also. So on the basis of that we calculated E A L. Although it is very long time to discuss, but basically, basic thing is that these three things, and all the basis of this isotope evaluation principle and this these three basic principle is the radio tracer technique is applied into the can be applied for any nutrition, any fertilizer. Suppose new product has been developed by Lata, so this can be easily been been uh, assessed by this using A, E, and L. And these are the formula by using. So here, what happens in case of conventional methods? We we don't we in case, we are having we have to keep one control. But you know that when we apply fertilizer, so there is reaction between fertilizer and soil. So availability of nutrient can can affect it. Where you cannot exactly calculate when fertilizer is also present in case of conventional. But in case of radio tracer technique, we can exactly say how much nutrient is coming from phosphorus coming from soil and how much is coming from the fertilizer. then indirect reverse isotopic dilution methods this method is a inverse dilution dilution method where what we where what we do in normal cases we are label, we are using the labeled fertilizers but in case of reverse isotopic dilution the method why we require suppose one fertilizer phosphate fertilizer like lac phosphate which is not soluble and it cannot be labeled with any radio tracer that's why we use a reverse isotopic dilution method where we we uh, Label the soil. So, in case of soil, when we apply uh, unlabeled, unlabeled fertilizer, so their availability of native phosphorus or native nutrient is reduced. So, in case of using uh, labeled fertilizer, we here we use labeled the soil. Then, nutrient movement and supply of various calcium, magnesium. Apart from we, we have reported example phosphorus, nitrogen, but we can go for the calcium, magnesium, nitrate, sulfate. 
and even some cases phosphorus also we can phosphor phosphorus normally we can use rubidium on other hand diffusion of various nutrient which is non mobile nutrients in the soil and soil column study for the leachate like she has done leaching experiment with that um, flask here we can use uh, labeled fertilizer with the leaching column experiment then some other studies which can be utilized by the radio tracers they are the carbon isotope fractionation as a tool for screening water use efficiency here we are not using radio isotope here we are using the stable isotope like here we use the calculated calculate the delta carbon what is delta carbon heavy isotope is c13 and uh, lighter isotope is c12 c13 to c12 ratio it is get affected by various nutrient use efficiency systems that's why we use called the carbon isotope fractionation methods then root activity studies by in these are the things has been done by for the especially for uh, deep rooted crop or uh, horticultural crop we where we lay, uh, we put the isotopes in different depth of the soil and then we measure the activity everywhere so suppose we have uh, we have uh, we have put that uh, isotope at 20 cm depth 40 cm depth and 80 cm suppose even in 80 cm that we are getting activity in that plant so it means root is going up to the 80 cm so this is the basic thing but it is not that much easy for doing in the field conditions we have to use that lysimeters and all those things then uh, use of n15 for quantify the biological nitrogen fixation so normally what i am saying there is two source one is fertilizer source another source is native source but in case of nitrogen fixing plant like legume plants third source is also there which is fixation from the nitrogen so that can be also easily calculated by using radio tracer technique so this is basic phenomena so this this radio tracer is first used by the uh, hepsi and panath in 2013 using radio level 210 lead indicator of different translocation lead in the plant tracer technique is now widely used for almost all field of plant physiology soil chemistry and plant biochemistry in applying the tracer technique in a minute quantity minute quantity of radio isotope elements is usually mixed with ordinary elements of the same kind of uh, whole path of become tagged and goes through the same complicated chemical reaction so basically chemically the two isotope chemically both are same we require less very minute quantity means even that uh, uh, nano level of uh, whatever tracer we are applied it is in the nano level if you can quantify in the concentration normally we say in the activity may not like becquerel or curie but if you can quantify in the uh, concentration manner they are in goes into the nano so this nano manner even small quantity of isotope exactly give you the picture what is that uh, happening with this nutrient in the soil and even the plant system so these are the some of the list of some isotopes so <laughs> why nitrogen having one isotope and 13 Which is uh, radio isotope, but half life is 10 minutes because we, we have to go for plant growth study. So we require an isotope which can be longer period of time. So that's why we, we use N15, uh, which is a stable isotope for P32. Both the isotopes is very useful. P32 both are beta emitters and one half life is 14.3 days and the most widely used isotope in the plant system. Then potassium normally uh, one isotope is there, uh, radio isotope. Uh, it is K forty two, but half life is twelve point four years. So in case of K, normally rubidium two twenty eight is being used. Then calcium very good isotope, calcium forty five one sixty five days half life. Half life means uh, if you do use thumb uh, thumb rule means within ten half after ten life half life reaches to the ambient environment. Suppose uh, Uh, P32 half life is 14.3 days. So after 140 days, it becomes uh, means uh, after decay there is no activity will be there. So that's why these isotopes are very useful while using the plants. Then magnesium is also having natural I means if a magnesium study we require magnesium 26 stable isotopes. One isotope uh, radio isotope is there, but half life is very less. Then in case of S35, which is also widely used isotope, 87 days half life. Then uh, strontium, uh, iron fifty nine, copper sixty four, zinc sixty five, another isotope. In case of copper sixty four, half life is twelve point eight hour. That's why we use copper sixty five stable isotope. So for measuring 
stable isotope and uh, radio isotope different instruments are there i will show these instruments also then carbon 14 is one of the isotope which is being used for this carbon and uh, carbon dating carbon translocation photosynthesis study even carbon now which is being used for the carbon sequestration study carbon priming study then for salinity for uh, this chlorine uh, 36 1954 then cesium 134 And cesium 137. There are two isotopes are there, and uh, cesium 137 having the specific role. I will discuss in another slide. So label fertilizers, uh, the study which we can do, nutrient requirement of crops, precise knowledge of type, amount and method at time of application of fertilizer, and quantify the biological nitrogen fixation. So these are the things where we can use for the labeled nitrogen, whether it is labeled uh, phosphate or whether nitrogen or whether it is uh, zinc or copper. some case study i am taking which we have done in our lab so one another one study it is a uh, we have used for p32 radio pressure for phosphatic fertilizer especially in cotton crop in batisan so here we have calculated a value and on the basis of a value we have calculated the equivalent ratio so if you can see that ssp dap and nitrophosphate theory three fertilizer there among uh, three among uh, three ssp and dap having the one So, if you take standard as SSP is the one, the SSP and DAP they are having the equivalent effect. But in case of nitrophosphate, means seven point five kg of phosphorus from nitrophosphate is equivalent to one kg of uh, phosphorus from the SSP or DAP. Means these two fertilizers are seven times uh, efficient than the nitrophosphate. Then. This is the example of inverse uh, isotope dilution principle. We have used the rock phosphate in the acidic soils. So there we have calculated the A value, and we have using their P32 SSP as a standard fertilizer to label the soil. And on the basis of this, we have calculated the A value. So you can see that A value on the basis of A value of rock phosphate, if you see, one to even from RP it was six from. Yeah, so I have the value means less efficient the fertilizers. Means uh, while applying these fertilizers, uh, plant is taking more phosphorus from the uh, soil in case in case of fertilizer. So you can see this is the highly efficient in the P and the phosphate MRP and P and P. Then another paper which we have we work on the we have developed the fertilizer using the post fertilization via slag in rice wheat cropping system. So there we have used the P in this display slide to prove the rights meaning that to pressure. Here also there is fertilizer. We are using lemon fertilizer. This new fertilizer we studied this effect. And this is we have done with the zinc. Same we have slides we have used for zinc as similarly to pressure study. Then this is part of soil fertility. Another part is soil degradation. Here erosion and other thing occurs. Especially, so in case of that, uh, we can use all our radionuclides. These three fallout radionuclides we have said the cesium one thirty seven, lead two ten, and beryllium seven. So all three are having different value. Cesium one thirty, uh, cesium one thirty seven, having the origin where in during nineteen fifty four to sixty three, there is air borne explosion, nuclear explosion. So due to that, that explosion and Chernobyl explosion. Due to that, that explosion, lot of cesium one thirty seven comes into the environment, and after precipitation, it goes into the soil. So they have scientists use this method for because it get, it get accumulated some places, and while the accumulation, they remove from that places and uh, say that uh, deposit some other places. So this method has been used uh, from cesium one thirty seven led to the uh, geogenic base. This is it origin from the soil also. You can see that uh, all the This 1954 situation, the cesium-137 goes into the atmosphere and through precipitation comes into the soil. Let me tell you, geogenic origin where radium, radium-226 converted, radium-226 converted into the uh, radon-222, and in case of during that, let me tell you that. Then beryllium-7 is basically a cosmic origin, which is formed due to the carbon dioxide and oxygen play the. the Uh, presence of cosmic rays. So this beryllium seven is also can be used for the short term purposes. So what happened in case in this case? 
we you, we have to find out one uh, radio nucleate uh, allowed with precipitation p and one reference site where maximum amount of uh, uh, deposition there is no disturbance of soil is up so suppose this soil this area having the area where soil is get it eroded from here and it is deposited from here. so this is eroded site so there see in this place see the cesium 137 is less than the reference site where it is accumulated in case of deposition site uh, this p uh, means uh, the cesium 137 because the area deposition is occurring soil level uh, this cesium 137 is high using some model this can be converted into the uh, how much uh, soil have been eroded from this area to this area and how much time it will take so this three barium uh, seven in uh, half life is 53 days it can be used for the less, less than 6 month of soil erosion study the cesium is medium term term process because it is from 50 53 onwards so 53 onwards which is perfect 50 years and for the lag to then half life is 23 years it can be used for the more than 100 year after study of soil erosion so why these are the soil erosion has been measured by many years with the conventional method like erosion plots and other techniques the main problem associated with this method are the need of long term observation period to prove procedural access access statistical acceptable results and the results are point specific applicable only to the condition of the experiments in addition to very difficult to obtain the results are bigger area like catchment and calculate the soil loss so this can be you go up to the catchment area to regional level erosion because soil erosion is a bigger from you know it is not a localized phenomenon by using this p palot radio nucleus we can go for the long means longer period of uh, times as well as longer area can be covered and some of this uh, uh in this study the total at all they have to conduct it and they found out that they are having very good correlation between the damp measurement as well as using cesium 137 measurement so uh, assessment of soil erosion rates are very consistent for uh, even for the longer period of time and the longer region then another method is compound specific stable isotope here c13 means carbon 13 is used Labeled means naturally carbon thirteen labeled uh, compound is being used as a marker. So where it will suppose every marker having especially uh, that land use different land use and different plant in growing they are having different uh, delta thirteen value. So all the plant produce range of army compound that leaks from the roots and leaks from the leaf and leaks of the soil. And the, these are army by marker used are fatty acid with a carbon chain. Length range between 14 C14 to 14 C24. They are soluble in water and bind to the soil particle. And these these markers are being used. Their delta 13 value is being used as a marker of fingerprint to identify source by its size. So means suppose uh, one soil is uh, coming from C14 type of uh, fatty acid and one is coming from C24. So every plant we can see that this type of Uh, uh, that soil or this uh, this uh, erosion is coming that particular type of soil. Different plant produce the similar range of army compound, but different isotope delta thirteen value. So according to that that delta thirteen value, we can we we can find out the origin of the soil where from soil it is coming. Then uh, another important trend. This is this is everybody knows the important to monitoring the soil moisture content. The accurate knowledge of soil moisture content is important in estimating water efficiency, crop water productivity, and nutrient growth are used to monitor soil moisture. And it is basically a principle which work on. So alpha particle in this nutrient moisture grow uh, having the aberration to forty one source, which could uh, and, and beryllium nine is the metal which is producing that. This alpha particle coming from this aberration to forty one bombarded and beryllium nine. And it will be withdrawn, and this neutron get slowed down by the hydrogen present in the water. On the basis of this slowing neutron, moisture content can be measured. This is an example of nitrogen fixing plants, which can be easily measured by the M15 level urea. Then another important that uh, cobalt 60 use or what I call the theoretical use. The uh, the hydrogenization of uh, sludge, industrial sludge, by using this cobalt sixty radiator. This radiator is present in Baroda uh, by the bar, and where uh, the municipal sludge is passes through the uh, cobalt sixty source, where there is all the microbes and whatever microbe sludge is coming out, 
they are having free from microbes which can be easily utilized for various purposes and these are the various instrument like this is the liquid scintillation counter especially used for the uh, beta particle analysis we can use p32 c14 c14 analysis we require some top level but in case of say p32 we can use here for counting using only water so for measuring p32 it is a very nice instrument and this is alpha gross alpha and beta detector and this is gamma ray spectrophotometer we are using germanium germanium high purity germanium hpg crystal and this is the mass spectrophotometer especially used for the stable isotope like nk so these are the various uh, any country or various things which people are use this techniques all over the world an important thing is that while using radio tracer in the soil or any field that is this radiation safety because you cannot see or you cannot smell the radio radio isotopes so you have to be very careful by using the so scientists and researcher should be complete for the radiation safety wherever this lab should be there it should be first you should have complete radiation safety. so that's all for my channel and you can say that radiation technology or radiation isotope this technique can be used very well in agriculture or sustainable in irrigation so thank you very much any question any doubt another is a excellent presentation because i worked on the radiation for a long time in the mass of things so i am fully committed to this certify Again, between also seeing six to eight other publications were made, but the challenge for radio test study is the expertise. And the DNA you after Rajiv Rajan and Vina believes that we take forward to the next step. In that particular case, you know, we, uh, we as a nanometer researcher, we depend on and create tracer studies, and uh, we attempted and did studies one time, and we get it to that we studied. How exactly the nano sensor can use the tracer? Very nice question, sir. Actually, uh, uh, I uh, before I think before thirty year back or thirty to forty year backs, this radio tracer technique while using everywhere means every university is having the very nice radio yeah. tracer lab. TNU, Panagar, IRI, and everywhere have the same field. I must say. What happening after that? There is no new fertilizer was coming. Only people are using urea. SSP and DAP, and this has a lot of study has been done with these tracer. Now, new fertilizers, new molecules is coming into the picture, and people want to know how exactly these molecules are working. And in that case, these techniques are very useful. As I told, when you applied the any things to foliar application or soil application, we have to exactly know how how efficient this fertilizer. Conventional method will show show you only fertilizer efficiency, but it will not say exactly how fertilizer. Being you come we're coming from from that this radio tracer technique we can uh, there is uh, two methods are there especially in case of soil isotope dilution method or reverse isotope dilution method both can be utilized. But the earlier days I remember that when I did phosphoric fertilizer the fertilizer is solid and then you take uh, phosphoric acid mm -hmm. it comes from a bath mm -hmm. and we mix it mm -hmm. and it becomes a radioactive mm -hmm. one then we put it as a fertilizer. But now we have the liquid fertilizer. For example, nano DAP or nano urea. It's a liquid. And how we use this? Yeah. So now even uh, yes, sir, nano. This, this time more easier because it is in the form of liquid. Okay. So their homogenization is more than in, in case of solid fertilizer. Solid. Because solid fertilizer, you have to three four cycle and then IR lamp you require to drying up. Then again you mix it to get the perfect homogenization. In case of liquid fertilizer, we are getting phosphoric acid that is also in the liquid form. Simply, you have to calculate the how much activity you need to add particular. Okay. So you get exactly how much specific. Here, calculation is of specific activity is very important because unless you are, if suppose you have wrong calculation of specific activity happened, then you cannot say exactly. Then all calculation will get uh, disturbed. So can we go for the real uh, yeah. reaction also? Yeah. So for example, nano DAP. Real phosphorus, real nitrogen. Yeah. That is a stable isotope, also radioactive. Can it be blended together yes. in the system? Yes. Yes. No, dual labeling is especially in case of nitrogen is phosphorus very easy. Even the 
Suppose you want to do in the lab, phosphorus and sulfur also both are radioactive because here in case of both are better. That can be also. Here it can be done in the greenhouse Yeah, yeah. We have to do and done in the control condition. Any experiment we are doing with the radioactive material should be done in the. Also, it is very expensive. One gram of uh, in yeah, I think was very costly because eight thousand rupees. Initially, it was yeah. it was being produced by the RCF Mumbai, yeah. but now the demand was not there, so they completely stopped that. They completely stopped their uh, production. So we have to depend upon uh, Sigma or other. But they are very N15 is very costly. But of course, uh, this uh, urea study can be taken with the C14 also because the urea having the same okay. carbon. carbon. So that we have to we can. You can apply the industry. The industry you know, after the several colleagues are asked in the previous research, and people depend on the radio test studies which are forgotten for several years. Yes. Now we are coming back to you. And uh, you need guidance about sure, the sure. environment. With the use of recency in case of nano-UVA thousand times, and people question whether you use the NPT. NPT results, no difference at all because Thirty-one percent use it in the diaphragm. That case where they extract and it's in the hospital. It's a very developed process. What I presume by this presentation, like two things are there. In case of like we give. Uh, Normal in normal course we give some nutrition for the healthy people, but some years we are giving that uh, what specialized, specialized nutrient in specialized time. So maybe it's that effect it means researchable issue. How you work on the nutrient delivery? Yeah. Long okay, thank you and happy uh, thank you. Sure, sir. Yeah. I, I always say one thing. Suppose uh, you are applying anything into the soil, but everything is not a fertilizer. First, it should define means the fertilizer definition should be there. If this material is fertilizer, then in case you ask uh, various material how it will result. Suppose uh, you are uh, you have to uh, considering suppose some sulfur rich material like gypsum. How you can do that? So in case of gypsum, I told it is it, it is tagging is difficult because it is not solid. So in that case, you have to tag your soil. Yeah, that that word soil. Yeah. So that's why uh, when we are doing soil experiment, should not be like one ton of soil and we are getting started. We have to use very small one or two kg soil. We have to tag with the because we have to see the transport. Even we also we use only soil. Which are the fifty gram of soil we use and exchangeable phosphorus. Yeah, it is now. Even we can do it. Also, this is like a this any experiment we are doing first. We are doing into the like this. Any new material we first we tested with the mice or some experimental. Minimal. So, in the small quantity of soil, small quantity of radio pressure, it will give you precise movement, precise transportation. Not exactly, but it will give you a real life. You can compare. Yeah. Hmm. Yeah, we can. We have to. We have to. You know, these things. We want to. So, titan, titosan, uh, titosan is having the lidocaine, but ultimately one product is coming where you can tag with the N15. One 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 thing is that you are tagged with the N15 level with the uh, and then you check it. Another method you can simply uh, use as a standard urea N15. And that, in comparison to that area, you can even. You know, there are different sources of nitrogen. For example, lignuria has nitrogen. No, now anything is there. You are getting one. Uh, you are you are developing only one product. Okay. You are developing only one product. Your fertilizer product is one lignuria. So how much coming from lignuria? That we want that. 
Is also yes, nitrogen. Good. When you when you are going to calculate total nitrogen, titanium nitrogen is also taking into the consideration, and whatever urea is there, that is also there because you are digesting. Okay, right. So all nitrogen is coming in there. Nitrogen. Yes. Ah, uh, silica uh, using radio tracer. There is work. Using silicon, I think uh, silica is also some work is there. Thank you, Jodhpur. Data study, you are asking for. And from that research, I come to know that the radio tracer study is more than thousand. Okay, all the good work done. Now, it's quite expensive. About ninety thousand. Which 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 tracer you are using? N fifteen. N fifteen. So N fifteen basically it is not a radio tracer. It is a stabilizer. But it is a tracer. So uh, N fifteen is costly because initially India is producing. India was producing lot of uh, N fifteen level urea RCF in Mumbai, plastic chemical fertilizer. But the demand uh, goes down. That's why they stop. So. How do you get it from Sigma? Sigma has a value. So, so I, my, my suggestion is that all the industry people they can approach either RCF or they can write a letter to Bark that we want this urea production and if if you can miss something like. But you have specific to tag, no? You the apple urea can be tagged. No, urea for tagging facility is there, but production facility is not. Okay. I'm saying production. You because N15 is production is different thing. Because many of the uh, laboratories across the country closed down because they depend on bulk. Bulk start to supply the tagged materials. So there is a problem of uh, you know uh, you have the stuff from uh, uh, Mumbai and the specialized device and the lots of it is too expensive. So it is closed because of this reason. But uh, production technology is there. You uh, buy here. फॉस्फोरिकॉस्फोरिक And we take our uh, solute because SSP and DAP is the solute solute phosphatic fertilizer, so it can be easily tagged. But in case of rock phosphate, they are not uh, soluble. So that's why we have used reverse in the sort of dilution. In case of N15, uh, there is uh, no tagging like thing because in N15 you require complete material. Or otherwise, uh, another another method is there that uh, that uh, delta N15 ratio. What is the delta value of this? The ratio between higher isotope and lower isotope. Suppose in in case of N15 and N15. So this differ for every crop also, and in case of every fertilizer having different N14 ratio. Natural. In case of carbon sequestration, also people two type of studies are there. One is the carbon priming study. Where we, where after adding some substrate, carbonic sub substance, how this carbon is uh, releasing in the form of CO. So if less CO2 is released, means they are more stable carbon, means more carbon sequestration. Another study is C13 C12 ratio, same delta. So some carbonic material having different delta ratio, which is having they they are more they because carbon sequestration we require it should go into the recalcitrant pool in high amount. So, like lignin is good source of carbon sequestration. That's why I am saying this material is not only a nitrogen fertilizer; it can be a good carbon sequestration source also. Yeah, this is different, different for different material. I am not talking about, but they are, they are, they are. Yeah, uh, minus plus it is remaining. So okay, it is like that. Are we going to deal with the delta value into end use efficiency? Uh, end use efficiency, basically, in case of end use efficiency, we have to we require the labor fertilizer. Okay. But in case of efficient cultivar, nitrogen efficient cultivar, they say, or phosphorus efficient, especially nitrogen efficient cultivar, so their delta value play very important. Like in case of um, carbon delta sequestration, 
carbon delta value some crop is having high uh, even water in case of like uh, uh, water we are having calculated the delta value of oxygen so there uh, irrigation water have different delta 18 value rain water is having different delta 18 value and ground water is having different value. same way for uh, because they are different sources so different sources can be distinguished So in case of which which uh, delta value is sufficient good for the carbon sequestration, so that can be studied. Machine can do the value, right? Yes, machine. Uh, first thing is machine you require to get calculate. Cal 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 then the formulas are there. The formulas where you have to put in this delta value and calculate. Formula are same for all the isotopes. <laughs> Okay, person derived from the past. Sixty-five, something like that. But the past, only sixty-five. No, no, no. Media. Yeah. 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 Percent derived from the fertilizer. Yeah. In this. 60, yeah, this is means how much phosphorus is derived from the fertilizer, not use efficiency. Okay. Then percentage. Percentage. The P use efficiency then in terms of A value we have given means uh, how much A value is higher means that uh, this fertilizer is not so good because most of the thing is taken from the soil, not from the fertilizer. So higher the PDA effect, lower the A value. You are aware that you are doing uh, kind of research on nano India and kind of nano places. Really want to study the end use and you are introducing new on nano into the system. Where exactly it goes, what happens in the soil. You really want to study all those things, including nitrogen use efficiency. As from your point of view, that is from my side, what kind of study you would recommend so that we can suggest our students to follow this. First thing is that uh, in case of uh, N15 labeled urea this material for any use efficiency because whatever material we are developing in the first year we develop we are saying that normal use efficiency is 30 percent we are taking to 60 percent so exactly we can come to know why this thing. second thing is that their degradation product for degradation product we require C14 labeled state or even for degradation product, not directly require uh, our uh, tracer, we require different uh, GCMS analysis. But C14 level, we can say that how much the degradation is there, which, which is more degrading, how fast is it degrading. We need to learn that very important uh, with, uh, we are under uh, standard. And uh, my do, another suggestion is that. Uh, as suppose we have, it is basically nitrogenous fertilizer. We have to see that how nitrogen is releasing, kinetic release of nitrogen. So temporarily means like one hour, two hour, means kinetic release, means nitrate and uh, ammonical nitrogen. And, yeah. Transformation product, if you want to see, because lignin is basically also part of soil. So it is, there is, I don't think any harm is in there. And if we only thing is that you can see that how carbon sequestration is occurring by applying this. NMR is also help. NMR is also help for C C thirty. Yeah, we set an amount of intact nanofertilizer. We want to know how it is distributed, how much is it in the soil, how exactly it is at the target site, where it goes to the grain and all. So we need to vaccinate how it is distributed. That is our target. So, so even if you see, you, you can take the example of how urea has been studied initially. Okay. Urea has been studied in two terms. First term they have studied that how much nitrogen is released from nitrogen, kinetic release like in, in terms of nitrate and ammonic nitrate. Second release, second study, but it is very few. They have studied the how much urea is remaining, remained in the soil. But after applying into the soil, uh, 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 there is no point of uh, because the moment you apply urea, urea hydrolysis occurs. 
to buy urate and all those things is wrong. All the study mostly con concentrated only on the release pattern like leaching of nitrate, releasing of ammonical and nitrate nitrogen and volatilized aeration losses of ammonia and two more study have been done that denitrification and another one is denitrification in terms of nitrous oxidation. So these study can be done for these nitrogenous fertilizers. Other study, I don't think, for the academic point of view, you can do n number of studies. What is the what is the reaction products or all those things? Reaction product study is lot, lot, lot of reaction product study has been done initially when fertilizer comes. So different reaction products have been formed for the nitrogen. But they have basically related to the nitrogenous product. Yeah. Then fractionation study. Fractionation study, nitrogen fraction in uh, labile pool. Nitrogen fraction is organic. Then now organic nitrogen, soluble organic nitrogen forms. So these fractionation different from nitrogenous study, lot of study done by urea and other products. So these study can be done. These fertilizers are only applied. Apply only to the leaf. There is no soil contributing here. So when the, it is applied to the leaf and we play with this much quantity getting to the plants as well. This is what the is. Yeah. So, plant study also, suppose uh, like uh, your material you can label in that with the C14. You spray it. Now, with the periodically, you take different portion. Means uh, leaf portion, stem portion, then root portion. And there you measure the radio Yeah. Yeah. So it means that the root exudate which is coming means C4. Why I am seeing C14? Because now C14 will indicate you, it is a tracer. See that this urea nano urea which you have applied through the leaf goes into the root also. And which is causes for this root flurry. Uh, and one thing is that uh, your means people say that uh, after application of fertilizer, root growth is increased. Normally, root growth increase when then fertilizer there is no nutrient is there because they goes here and there. If, 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 by, if you see that uh, in case of uh, nitrogenous, in case of rice root, lot of water, it, rice root is not goes that much depth, but in case of wheat, it can goes even to more than one meter. Yeah, that's right. So the nutrients yeah. obviously the yes. <laughs> 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 so that would be. But people say that when we apply fertilizer, root growth is increasing, which is not like that. I got down to the system. <laughs> no, no, that is a natural system. <laughs> Man has its own nature to extract the uh, soil. <laughs> so, proteolytics, when the plant is suffering from phosphorus, there is a proteolytic protein, the exudate, uh, uh, exudate rich in acid, <laughs> solubilized <laughs> uh, soil, and we get the phosphorus. It's a natural one. But here, those we intend to apply foliar, intended to boost the growth. So, so in, in that case, first study we require whether which nano urea we are applying, where it is going. Yeah, that is it is remaining the in the leaf. So, C14 level exactly says, suppose we you cut the plant, you take yeah. out the plant, clearly wash, and then you analyze C14 content in the plant. Very easy. Simply you have to digest it or simple uh, take that. Uh, Crush it, take the sap, and just liquid scintillation counter reading C14. If C14 reading is coming, means it means that you, whatever nano urea you have applied into the leaf, it goes into the root. One thing it is proven. Now you want to see which root exudate is coming, that is another issue. That you require GCMS, organic acid analysis, which are because root exudate mainly either organic acids are there or some other things are there. Inolean compounds are there. So that can be done by a simple method, simple, whatever method is available. The only thing is that for here, like in case of when I apply to the soil, we just see in the leaf also see that uh, leaf nitrogen content is increases because the application of this fertilizer. So here we, we can say that this is movement. This movement is exactly this in the, uh, this urea is going because C14 tag material is coming. So, then they don't happen. You know, in case of urea, so here, here yeah, transformation product we cannot know. 
this yeah. state require another study yeah. but here only one we, we can identify that this movement because phloem and xylem movement is there so whether xylem movement is there or not so on behalf of the uh, center for agriculture nanotechnology dna bambadu I'm very much privileged to propose this formal vote of thanks. Uh, I express my deep sense of gratitude to the uh, guest speaker, Dr. Manoj Sivasaji, principal scientist IRI, for delivering an excellent lecture on radio isotopes, the, the role of radio tracers in soil health. Uh, thank you very much, sir. Your presentation enriched our knowledge in radio uh, tracer studies, and it's also helped us to go uh, to uh, to revise or revisit our uh, Uh, research in nano fertilizers. What next level we need to do in nano fertilizer research? And now uh, it's an it's an order of the day that we need evidence to demonstrate how best our nano fertilizers are doing well. So with that, we we ensure that your uh, uh, radio uh, tracer studies will help us uh, uh, to to support our research base. Uh, once again, thank you very much, sir, for uh, despite your step up in schedule of events, you have joined us for the Viva OC as well as For delivering this case lecture, I whole heartedly thank our uh, office of the dean of speeches for facilitating us uh, for organizing this wonderful event. Uh, special thanks to our former director of research and scientific advisor, Paramatma International, for for joining us and uh, uh, for uh, for triggering us uh, in the different dimensions of nano fertilizer. Uh, I also thank each and every participants who have joined in person as well as uh, through the online mode. Of uh, thanks for the active participation. Uh, last but not the least, I thank our uh, respected Professor and Head Center for Agriculture and the PGDR Coordinator for successfully organizing this entire event. Thank you very much.